mill stands have various roll arrangements depending on the product being rolled. The simplest arrangement is a two high stand, used mainly for long products such as sections. And for that reason it is generally rolled whilst it's hot. All right, welcome to this video. Um, today we are going to go over uh, rolling. And specifically, we're going to discuss the forces and uh, geometry of, of uh, rolling force calculations. Okay, so maybe I'll start out drawing uh, just a simple flat rolling of a piece of sheet metal. So uh, maybe it's plate turning into sheet metal. So we have uh, a roller here and another roller here. And we have thick material coming in. And it leaves a little thinner. Okay, so these rollers would be kind of sucking the material in, so they'd be rolling at some RPM, some rotational speed. And that rotational speed would have some sort of uh, surface speed on the surface of the roller. We'll call that uh, VR. And the material coming in is getting sucked in, so it would be rolling in at some original speed and then exiting at some final speed. And just to kind of complete this, this roller would also be rolling in this direction, and it would have the same VR um, velocity of the roller on the surface. Okay, um, so another variable I just want to hash out is the height of the sheet or the plate, could be sheet, could be plate, and then the height of the, the original height, and then the uh, height leaving. Um, so some sort of variables I want to hash out here. So h, the height of the original piece is greater than the height leaving the rollers. Um, you have uh, the speed. This is kind of interesting, and I kind of want to go into this. You have your velocity of the original height of the plate is actually slower than the roller, the rolling speed. And the rolling speed is slower than the speed of the plate uh, exiting the roller. So that's that that's interesting to me. That that's really interesting to me. And how could something you know speed up as it goes through this? Isn't it just gonna go the same speed as the rollers? Um, you would think, but actually there's something going on here. We're reducing the size of the sheet. So much like a fluid, you know, if we have a, let, let's, let's draw a big tank. Let's draw a big tank here. And then there's a, it goes into a, a hose at the bottom of the hose. So this tank is large. Maybe it's the size of a, a pool. We will just draw some water in here. So uh, up here, you know, the velocity of the water going in, you know, this direction 
is quite slow. Maybe you don't even notice it at all. So maybe the velocity here is uh, maybe close to zero. And it's got to have some speed because it's going to be emptying, but uh, it, it's, it's almost negligible. Now, the speed coming through here is actually quite fast. So our V final through the hose, that's V original, our V final through the hose is actually going to be uh, greater than our V original because it's speeding up as it goes through this smaller area here. So gushing out here in that direction. So that's the same thing that's kind of going on in rolling where you have uh, a larger uh, thickness here goes through the rollers and it's at a slower speed and the rollers are kind of sucking it in and then pushing it out at a faster speed because it's getting smaller. Okay, so because of that sort of phenomenon going on, um, there's going to be some frictional forces going on in here. So let's maybe draw a bigger picture of that. So we have a portion of the roller here, and then a portion of the roller here. Now pretend that those are circles, and you have your material coming in here, and then it's exiting at a smaller height here. So we have HF and HO h original and h final so there's some some things going on in this range where you're actually doing the squishing and that's the real interesting bit of this okay so you have your roller speed on the surface at vr and then um, you have your V original coming in at that speed, and then finally you have your V final going at a faster speed. So at some point, the material is speeding up in here, and then at some point the roller is actually slower than the material exiting. So those create frictional forces. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll use red for those. So um, the roller is sucking the material in, so that's creating a force pulling in the material this way. And then at some point, because this material is moving faster than the roller, that's creating, it's pulling on the material. So it's going to be creating a force in that direction. And then at some point, the material is exact same is the exact same speed as uh, VR, and that's going on here as well. So uh, everything is equal and opposite. So that's how friction works. So we have a, a term for that, and it's called uh, forward slip. So forward slip um, is equal to uh, your, your V final minus your velocity of the roller over the velocity of the roller. So this is forward slip is the relative motion, relative, or I guess velocity. Uh, between your V final and your V roller. So, um, and this is a, an important 
sort of characteristics because a lower, you know, use a different color, a lower forward uh, slip is preferable. Okay. And this is because there's less friction. Um, you get a much better surface finish with uh, lower uh, relative speeds. So let's break down how friction uh, is, is uh, how we can look at, analyze this for friction. Okay, so we all know that um, you know, go back to white here. So friction can be calculated as uh, the force, force of friction as a friction coefficient times a normal force. So that would be some force of the rollers, you know, pushing that way. Maybe I'll, I'll make this N purple. And so these rollers are obviously squeezing this, this, this material. So they're actually putting force right at that no slip point. Maybe I'll no slip. Point. It's also called the neutral point. Um, so anyway, um, this friction coefficient, you know, use orange or something here. So this, there's a formula here that relates draft to friction. So Draft is a real easy concept to understand. So draft is just the difference between the height of the material. So that's uh, H O minus H F, your original height minus your final height. And friction is related to this, so the higher the friction, and have higher friction coefficient. So um, we can use this formula here. So H original minus H final is equal to your friction coefficient squared times your rolling radius. So this roller has some sort of radius. So if we want to look at, if we just break this down and isolate um, the friction coefficient, we can look at how these variables affect this. So your friction coefficient is going to be the square root of H O minus H F over R, the radius of your rollers. So we said that forward slip, um, the lower the forward slip uh, is preferable. And to lower the forward slip, um, you lower your friction and um, you get better surface finish and, and things like that uh, and higher efficiency of your uh, rolling process. So if we increase the difference between HO and HF, so maybe I'll just make this a little simpler. So, so delta H over R. So if we increase the 
the the the h uh, the the delta h the difference in height we increase the friction and so that's not actually a good thing because that causes more forward slip um if we increase the radius and since this is in the denominator we have a large number over uh, a larger number over a smaller uh, you know a smaller number then that decreases our friction coefficient and you know vice versa if we decrease our difference we're going to lower the friction coefficient if we decrease our um, radius we're going to have a lower friction coefficient or higher sorry if we decrease the, the r the this the radius that's actually going to uh, increase the friction so it's not necessary uh, so that's how that sort of relationship works okay so we are doing all of this to determine the rolling force okay so eventually we want to get to our rolling force so um, the rolling force can be calculated using this formula here. I'm going to break down that formula for you. So F is equal to the contact length times the width of the material times our average true stress. Okay, so if we look at a piece getting rolled, I'm going to draw it without the top roller. Um, it's so that you can see better. So it's getting squished here, and then it's coming out like that. So there's a there's a roller here and there's a roller on top, but I'm just not showing it. So you have your width of the piece, and you have your original height, and you have your final height. Okay, and so the contact length is this portion here. And then you have your width here. So, uh, so your contact length times your width is this area here. So this is an area. So an area, maybe it's in inches squared times a true stress. Which has units, maybe PSI, which stands for pounds per square inch. So your inches times your pounds per square inch will cancel the inch units and you'll be left with pounds. So that is a measure of force. Just like that. So let's break down now what L is. Width is width, we know this. We know it's just the width of the of the, the sheet 
for the plate and but we don't know what l is so let's let's look at what l is so l is equal to your rolling radius times your h your delta h your h original minus your h final So let's look at how maybe the how that affects the force. So let's insert that into here. So we have h equals the square root of r minus or times your draft. Remember this is draft times your your width times the average true stress. Maybe I'll make that clear. Average true stress. Okay, so if, if your rolling resistance goes up, your force goes up. If your draft increases, your force increases. Um, same thing with these. So these are all sort of proportional to the force. If, the, any, if any of one of these variables increases, um, and I'm talking about delta H here, So if, if R increases, if delta H increases, if your width increases, if your true stress, your average true stress increases, then your force increases. So if you want to reduce your force, you reduce any of these. And force is related to power. Power is related to costs. So um, there's... A whole reason why we want to, you know, manage manage our forces. That's what we're really trying to do here. Is we're trying to manage how much force we're putting on this. Remember, these rolling these rollers only have, you know, uh, only so much strength. So you you can't just increase the force. You know, I want to uh, take a, a a 12 inch uh, piece of material and make it into a you know 0 0.08 thick sheet in one go. It just uh, it just wouldn't work um, because your forces would just be so high at that point. Um, so so anyway, um, so let's kind of look into this uh, this true stress. So we, we still don't know how to calculate that. So um, To calculate the true the average true stress, maybe I'll just average true stress. Um, you have to use this formula here. So um, this is going to give you. So again, we see uh, common variables here. So, and then we find this on a table. So let's just get that table for a moment. Just gonna copy this. So this is a, a material property. Um, so you have your true strain, which is 
this uh, epsilon symbol here, the epsilon here. And so the larger, in general, um, for all of these materials, the larger the true strain, the larger the true stress. All right, so uh, y average can be calculated as uh, your true stress original plus your true stress uh, at epsilon over two. So if you had a, let's just uh, be drawn here. Um, let's look at uh, copper. Let's say you had a um, a true strain of 0.6. So just going up here, we end up about here. And if we look over here, we get a kind of a true stress of 60,000 PSI. Um, so you get 60,000 PSI. Copper, this annealed copper has a, a, a true stress um, original in the annealed state of about 12,000, so this point rate. right here, so 12,000. And so you would divide that by two and you would get about 72,000, which divided by two would be um, 36. Uh, thousand PSI. All right. So what we can draw from this is that uh, if your you can't really change this, this is a material property, but if your true strain increases, your, your true stress at, um, at the true strain increases, just as it did here in our example of 0.6 true strain. Um, and if this variable increases, then your y average increases. And finally, if we redraw our or rewrite our force calculation, our y average increases, our force increases. So there's, uh, a, let's just recap on some of the, the, the items here. Okay. So during the rolling process, this thing, the, the rollers are moving at a constant speed the material going in is going at a slower speed than the rollers and the material coming out of the rollers is going at a faster speed and that's because you're compressing the material and it's squishing it out of the rollers um, but at some point the material is at the the same speed as the uh, rollers so we get this difference between our rolling speed our rolling speed and our uh, final speed, and that contributes to forward flip, which is the relative, uh, you know, uh, velocity or relative um, difference between um, your final velocity and your rolling velocity. Um, and 
increasing your forward slip is less preferable because it uh, causes uh, you know, more uh, inefficiencies in your system as well as, um, and by doing that, it increases your, your friction force, which causes your motors to, you know, to the, or the whole system to act less efficient, um, having too much friction force. Um, so lower forward slip is preferable. It also gives a better surface finish to the, the material because there's less friction on it. Um, and that's where we came to sort of this formula down here, uh, where to reduce your, you know, your friction, um, you basically either inc uh, increase your rolling force or decrease your, your draft, which is your the difference between the height of the original and the height of the final. So there's a little bit of a balance here because increasing your rolling, um, your rolling radius, your roller radius, radii, um, you increase your force. So if you increase your for your rolling radius, uh, your force increases. So there's a bit of a balance there that you have to manage. And then also uh, increasing your draft leads to a higher true stress or true strain, I should say. Um, and if we increase our true strain, then we increase our average true stress, which then also leads to uh, higher forces. And so the higher forces, the higher power that is required. And so let's now just relate this to power. So power can be calculated as So this is equal to two pi, the force times your contact length times the RPM over 33,000. So And this contact length needs to be in feet. So let's just write the variables down. So you have your force, which is equal to rolling force. You have the L, which is in, so this would be in pounds. You have your contact length. And that's in uh, feet. And then you have your RPM, which is in, uh, I guess, uh, rotation. Which is in R. PM. The 2 pi just converts the RPM into uh, radians, which is used to calculate power. And this 33,000 uh, must be some sort of constant um, to convert uh, um, into horsepower. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure about that one, but uh, it's kind of an unnatural number, so it must be some sort of conversion to get uh, your these units into horsepower. Okay, um, so that concludes the video uh, on uh, rolling forces. Um, if you have any comments, leave them in the con, con uh, in the comment boxes. 
uh, below and uh, in the next video we're going to go over a example with uh, real numbers and real materials with real dimensions. Okay, thanks for uh, your time. Hope you're well and stay safe out there. Thanks.